FD Luigi, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I found this guy earlier too. What the fuck? I had no jump? Where did my jump go? That's lovely. Bro, I've been finding so many fucking Little Macs today. It's actually insane. Like, I was playing Elite before I even, like, started streaming. And, dude, I ran into, like, five Little Macs. I'm not joking. I expected a counter. What's good, Silver X? How you been, man?
Yeah, life's been chilling for me. Just vibing. The usual. Hate to see it. I thought he was trying to up me, but he didn't. But yeah, today is gonna be matchup chart day, because we hit 500 votes. I was planning on posting that incentive thing, like, today, but we hit 500 votes pretty fast. So, <laughs> I was just like, damn. Yeah, Luis is like, he pulled ahead really hard. Like, really hard. Like, most of us are like, everyone's below 1k. Like, SkyJ is second with 988 votes. Rills is third with 788. Nao, fourth with 675. Uh, Karama, fifth with 626. I'm sixth with uh, 602. So it's like, everyone's like pretty close there. And then Luis is in first with 3,324 votes. <laughs> He has so many votes because of the people from NorCal buying uh, spectator passes and just like putting their votes towards him. That's a cheat code, bro. Because it's like they don't have to pay for travel costs, so it's like why wouldn't they get it? Thank <laughs> you. 
I meant to parry that. So talented. I'm just doing shit. Box shift around that. I swear, half the time this cloud has hit me, it's been on accident. This tavern ass music. You wanna link it? I can link it for you. Yeah, clouds do do the most random ass up smashes. They just kinda be ripping it. Alright, let's do one or two more just to let people join and then we'll hop in the matchup chart. What the heck? <laughs> oh, thank you, Crimson Blitz. I appreciate that a lot. Yo, I was low-key so nervous for that. I was just like, fuck, like, I only have two minutes. I gotta, like, put out all my thoughts, like, so fast. But I'm glad it was, like, well-received. I didn't think so many people were gonna have videos. Some people just didn't even, like, do it at all. Like, they just, like, didn't, like, make a video, didn't show. Dude, why are there so many little <laughs> Yeah, but some people just had like their godlike videos like get played. I'm just like, okay, well. <laughs> I 
If I was streaming earlier, oh my god, I actually ran into like five little Macs in a row. It was insane. And they were like all different people. I knew he was gonna roll, oh my god. I saw he didn't DI, I'm just like, bro, I'm about to get upbeat for this. I literally read the roll, like, he clanking. What's up, Serial Tobe? But yeah, we can probably get started on it now. What's this? We're about to make a matchup chart. I dropped my incentives on Twitter uh, today. I can actually show you real quick. Um, so yeah, here are my incentives for now. I'm definitely open to adding more, but you know. Once we add more, or if we add more, like people can recommend like incentives and shit, so. Okay, so. Yeah, 
Yeah, the horror game I'm like kind of excited for. That's gonna be cool. Um, you recommended Outlast, so I might do that. But if someone else has like a different fucking game to add for it, could be down. All right, let's just start those tiers off. But yeah, I don't know if there's any other like modern day like horror games. But like Outlast you said is like a classic, so I've never played it and I don't remember like what it's about or anything, so it might be cool. Five Nights at Freddy's. I've played the Five Nights games. Well, I've played them up to four. Um, I like one, two, and four. Three I didn't really like too much. I never finished three, but I finished all the other ones. Yeah, I've played Five Nights already. Yeah, I need to play a game that like I haven't like experienced before, so I really like I'm just being caught off guard and shit. Uh, take off the Echo Fighters. <laughs> Yo, shut up, Jax. <laughs> Five Nights too scary. All right, start off with Banjo. I think Banjo's a slight win. Uh. Banjo has some pretty good survivability, so like, I mean like, I feel like a lot of people would think that, yeah, this is a sheep matchup chart. I feel like a lot of people would think that like Banjo would be here, just cause Banjo kinda sucks, but like, Banjo has some pretty good survivability versus sheep. Um, so, I usually put him like around here, he's pretty annoying to fight. Um, I feel like you can't even really like hard hard punish like Wonder Wing too often, so. Like, obviously you can, like, get, like, a combo, but it's not not like you're gonna kill him at, like, 60 or, like, 70 for, like, doing a, a shitty Wonder Wing. Like, you kind of have to play neutral Banjo a lot more than most characters. But your neutral is still, like, 10 times better than his. Not 10 times, but, like, you know what I mean. Noticeably better than his. Um, once he's out of Wonder Wings, he's, like, a sitting duck off stage. but you have to respect that option until he uses it up. Um, if you know how to use Grenade, like, how, if your item play is good, you can get some pretty sick extensions off of it. So, I think that definitely helps a lot. If you don't know how to play with Grenade, it definitely makes the matchup a little bit harder. But if you do, it's definitely noticeably easier. Z-catching it, um, and whatnot. So yeah. Bayonetta, I think is probably even. Uh, Sheik has a better neutral than Bayonetta, but Bayonetta obviously shits out damage. So, I feel like those two kind of go like hand in hand. So it's like, you're kind of playing the game of like, all right, yeah, I'm gonna eat this like Bayo tax, but you know, I can play around your win cons pretty well. Bayo can play around Sheik's win cons pretty well too. She has pretty good like mobility in the air uh, with her specials, and Sheik has mobility to like punish her landings, but it's like she can be really ambiguous with it. And Bats Within is really annoying because like the frame one out makes a lot of tight confirms just not work on Bayo. So I played this matchup a decent amount offline. Um, I played Tejus, I played Geist, I played Amaryllis, I played Deathspade at SmashCon so many matches. Definitely think it's an even matchup. It's definitely very taxing to play though, when both sides know what they're doing. Um, Bowser, I think Bowser is definitely just a solid win for Sheik. Um, a lot of people like think that like Bowser, Sheik is like even for some reason. I mean like I kind of like understand why they think it, they're like oh Sheik like will struggle to kill like heavies and like Bowser like trades pretty well he'll just like kill but I think that Bowser the only place that Bowser really thrives in the matchup is like ledge trapping which is like most matches for him but like offstage is really bad for him back air is so active it kind of just like stuffs him out repeatedly you can just rinse repeat him a lot frame 4 air dodge is really bad for combos um yeah nothing he has in neutral is really safe so I feel like you just kind of have to play a patient neutral against Bowser player on shield which is fine because like she has plenty of throw combos and really good shield pressure so up B isn't really an issue um, if you're getting up B, you're either hitting him way too high on the shield or you're just pressing a button afterwards but if you shield the up B, it's like super super punishable so yeah pretty good matchup just kind of an execution test IMO um, Bowser jr. I think Bowser jr. is also a winning matchup for Sheik um, Bowser Jr. Really heavy. I think Bowser Jr. actually has really good survivability against Sheik. See, 
that's the thing like i feel like even though bowser is heavier than like the heaviest character in the game i don't think his survivability versus sheik is that great because the kill confirms work very well on him and like he his ledge options are really bad his tech options are really bad his offstage game is really bad so you have a lot of different places to find kills versus bowser bowser jr is like somewhat similar but the offstage is a lot better um you're still gonna be able to combo him and like get all that stuff but like offstage is like really good and he also has armor when returning to stage so it's not like you can hit him with like a free like needle constant fish for like coming back onto stage or a back air or something so you kind of have to pick your spots a lot better versus bowser jr um i don't think it's enough to probably to put him in slight win like i put like if y'all were to put a number on it i'd probably say like six four or something like 55 45 or six four but like, I think it's a better matchup than Bowser, but it's still not a good matchup. Um, Violet is also winning for Sheik. Um, I've played this matchup a lot with Justin, like a lot. Um, Violet definitely struggles in a lot of aspects. The mobility is the biggest part. Um, he just kind of like... Violet doesn't really control the pace of neutral in that matchup, like at all. Um, there's a lot of things that Violet does that... Violet gets away with versus other characters that they don't get away with versus Sheik. Nair spam is like only so good, especially because like if a Sheik knows how to put out a shield, um, it kind of makes Nair pretty risky to go for since you can kill him from off it and just combo off it at lots of percents, tech chase at low percents. Um, very good combo weight. The tether is, I'm not going to say it's free to edge guard because it's definitely not. It's probably the best DLC tether, or the best like upbeat tether, I want to say. but. There's still limitations, so you're definitely going to be finding a lot of kills that way. Um, Violet does have some cheese though. Up B cheese on ledge kills pretty early. Um, if you get shield broken by Violet, you're dying at zero. But I don't think it's enough to like really sway the matchup. Captain Falcon. I feel like on paper, Falcon is like here. But in practice, he's probably like around here. Because um, Falcon has like... His neutral is not good versus Sheik. His frame data is really bad. Um, he's kind of doing a lot of things preemptively to try and stuff you out. Or just whip punish you. Um, or just trade with you, to be honest. Like, Falcon just kind of has to play Degenerate in this matchup. To, like, get his hits. But when he does get his hits, he kind of hurts. Like, Stomp Knee will kill, like, absurdly early. Probably, like, 40 with Rage. So, you have to make sure that you're playing a really solid neutral as Sheik. But if you do, Falcon can't really play the game. Offstage is really bad for Falcon. Um, the low profiles is also pretty bad. Because the only way he really has to deal with low profiling Sheik is uh, pretty committal options. The least committal one being probably down air. But um, it's like down air, dash attack, down tilt, which doesn't really give reward. Raptor boost is okay. But yeah, I'll, I'll, like pretty much everything of that is like really risky. So Falcon is going to be taking a lot of risks in, in this matchup, but... If he guesses right, he can do some serious damage. Okay, Krom. Krom is definitely a winning matchup for Sheik. Pretty bad. IMO. His offstage game, horrendous. Um, Krom is known for having one of the worst recoveries in the game. Sheik's back air is active for 10 frames. And so on the way up from the up B, um, if Sheik is holding ledge, Krom just can't make it back ever, which is pretty bad. Um, even if you're on stage, Sheik has a lot of ways to deal with it. Um, shore hop needles are probably the best way, like most reliable, because you need to shore hop needles and then confirm off of that with like a down tilt, a back air, a dash attack. Excuse me, something to like hit him away. Um, on stage is pretty good. I think his on stage game is better than Roy's, because I think Roy struggles against Sheik for the reason of his sour spots, like the sweet spot sour spot thing. Um, when Sheik crouches versus Roy, he tends to get sour spots like a lot, like a lot, a lot. That's not really the case with Krom. So his onstage game is definitely noticeably better, but I don't think it's enough to really sway the matchup. I know that Mr. R thinks this matchup is really bad and he plays both. I feel like both sides agree that this matchup is pretty bad. So don't really need to explain that too much. Cloud, it's probably a slight win. Um. Cloud startup is probably his biggest weakness, along with his recovery. His recovery is not even that bad, low key. Um, he has some solid mix-ups compared to most characters. Like Krom versus uh, Cloud, like 
Definitely has way better mix-ups. But it is still an exploitable recovery at the end of the day. Um, I think that the biggest thing is that the startup of Cloud really like is the end of him. Because he doesn't really have rising aerials too much. Like you're only like you're only gonna be doing a rising back air or a rising aerial if you're like trying to like call someone out for like jumping. You're not gonna do it to hit someone grounded. So a lot of the time Sheik will just like use her superior frame data to stuff him out in the air before he can get his hitboxes out. What's up, Koofy? So yeah, Sheik is just gonna use her superior frame data to stuff him out in the air before he can get stuff started. And then she also has a good time dealing with uh, Clouds of Vanity State with his juggles, with bouncing fish and whatnot. Um, you've probably seen Void versus Spargo. Granted, like, Spargo probably wasn't playing the hottest, but I still think that Void played it pretty well overall. Pretty, pretty meh matchup for Cloud. Corrin, I think, is solidly winning for Sheik. I played this matchup a decent amount. I played Cosmos' uh, Corn and I beat it at SmashCon. Um, I know that Neo thinks that this is Corn's worst matchup. Uh, maybe? Like, I don't doubt it. Sheik outframed it as her. And then, the thing about Corn's upbeat is that the way to beat it is that you have to trade with it with a lingering hitbox because um, the iframes last from frame. I believe it's frame 7 to 17 and then frame 18 is when the hitbox comes out so there's a one frame gap of where you know the hitbox is starting up but there's no iframes so if you just put out a lingering hitbox which Sheik's has a lot of those with nair back air even down air you can trade um needles also work you can kind of stuff out corns up and just skimp her for free um and then she doesn't really have the outer shield to deal with Sheik's pressure whatsoever um, especially like down tilt pressure, like Corrin doesn't have a move that hits low enough out of shield to like really deal with that. Um, footstool out of shield will help, but not enough. Um, and then her biggest swing juggling, she has a pretty good time dealing with the uh, dealing with juggles. So, so yeah, pretty solidly winning. I think both sides agree to that. Um, Peach Daisy. I want to put this. Let me actually add another category. Hold on. I want to put like an even. I kind of want to say that Peach goes here. But at the same time, I'm like, nah. But also, like, Peach is kind of broken. The Sheik's mobility is really good. I know that Ling thinks that this matchup is not good for uh, for Peach. I know he also lost to Mr. R at Gommel, I believe. But I could see an argument for it being even. I could see an argument for Sheik winning. I can't really see Peach winning unless like they just zeroed it at you every stock. But I'd probably put it around here. Do I still have my annoying character tier list? I saved it. Um, but, let me see. Is this a, no, it's not this. All right, here it is. Yeah, I saved it. That's it right there. But, that's for another day. Um, Pit, I think it's a slight win. Um, Pit's just kind of underwhelming, low-key. Um, oh shit. My apologies, I did not mean to hit my mic. Uh, Pit. In neutral, I think Pit actually does pretty well against Sheik. Honestly, like, I think Pit players in NA are pretty mid, so maybe it's better for Pit than I think, but... When I play it, it just always seems like Pit is kind of underwhelming. He has pretty good buttons in neutral. Um, not in terms of disjoint, but like his frame data is pretty good, and his moves are pretty active. But... I don't know, he's just kind of... Just kind of not it. <laughs> like, I don't know how to, how to put it. His offstage is kind of, like, okay, too. Um, once he's out of jumps, 
his recovery yeah i was gonna say his recovery with his jumps is like not bad versus streak he's just all amount of mix-ups once he's out of jumps it's like basically just edge guarding arsene which is really bad so i don't know it's kind of a double-edged sword if he can manage his resources well it's definitely like fine but once he runs out of jumps he should kind of be dying or at least eating a million percent yeah down b does negate needles to edge guard so i don't know maybe it could be like here but until I play a pit that really makes me like sweat sweat, I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna leave it here. At least dark pit. I would assume that pit, normal pit does slightly better, but I don't know. Yeah, he's a bit slow. His initial dash is pretty good though. Um, Diddy Kong, I would probably put Diddy Kong in even. Yeah, you can crouch, well, you can crouch dark pit's arrows um at long range, or at close range. Long range, you can curve it down enough to hit your crouch. Yeah, Diddy Kong, I think, is even. Um, this is a very Smash 4-ass matchup. Um, it's just a lot of neutral. Uh, Diddy Kong... I think Diddy Kong does better in the last hits than Sheik. Just because his win con is easier to find. Usually just getting a banana, monkey flip at the edge. Um, up smash out of shield. Things of that nature. Where Sheik usually has to find a setup. But... I think that Sheik's neutral is pretty good versus Diddy Kong. She never really has to commit. Diddy Kong usually has to be the one, I don't want to say aggressing, but like the one like kind of finding things, finding openings in neutral. Where Sheik is just kind of with punishing Diddy a lot more. Um, I think that this matchup can be hard if you don't know what you're doing. Because Monkey Flip is pretty ignorant in this matchup. You can't really stuff it out as Sheik. You kind of have to move around it. Which is fine, because like, you definitely have the mo mobility to do so. Needles needles will stuff it out, I mean like, that's a projectile. But I'm talking about like, actual hitboxes, you can't really stuff it out. You'll always be trading, and that's not going to be a good trade for you unless you're up a stock. Um, but Diddy's offstage is pretty... I'm not going to say it's bad, because it's definitely not. Like, definitely not. But compared to most characters, Sheik probably has an easier time edgeguarding Diddy than most characters. Needles knocking him out of barrels is pretty significant. Um, and especially, like, if you're able to grab Banana, uh, Diddy Kong, like, Diddy Kong, like, without Banana, just, like, straight hands, is not beating Sheik. He kind of just gets outpaced, outmashed. I feel like it's just, without Banana, Diddy probably would lose to Sheik. But with Banana, definitely makes it so that Sheik has to respect him a lot more. I played this matchup a lot. Um, Rivers actually used to be my demon across multiple characters. But I was able to beat him with Sheik in two sets. I got one fusion over him. But even with that, like, I definitely still think this matchup is even. I played Aaron in it too. I played Tweak in it. Tweak is really good. But even like with everyone, like it felt very winnable. Like it just felt like I had to make better decisions in neutral. Which is like, it's like I said, it's just a Smash 4 ass neutral matchup. It's pretty even. I played it from the Diddy side too, because I play a little bit of Diddy just for fun sometimes. Um, it definitely feels like I get fucking mashed on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, DK. DK is definitely winning. DK is mad cheesy though. Ding Dong will kill you stupid early. I think the window is like 55 or something. It starts at 55, I want to say. So you can die really early if you're not careful. But still has a frame 4 air dodge. Recovery is really bad. Um, not as easy to contest versus good Donkey Kongs as you would think, but still very exploitable. Um, he has some solid disjoints with his tilts to keep you out. When I played Chunky Kong in Miami last year, he was really good at, uh, just waiting and spacing me out. Like, it felt like I was getting camped, which is weird. <laughs> but, at the end of the day, DK, like, should not really be doing too much against you. Just hit your combos and you'll be fine. Dr. Mario. I think Dr. Mario is only a slight win. Everyone says Dr. Mario's ass and like, kinda. <laughs> but he still like kinda has Mario hitboxes, like the brawler archetype. He trades really well with Sheik. Um, the offstage is the real killer in this matchup. Cause like, it's the offstage and the mobility. Cause honestly, everything else, Doc like, keeps up with Sheik pretty well in terms of like frame data, damage output, trades. Pill is like kind of annoying to deal with. 
but I played Bacon in this matchup. I played kind of bad versus Bacon. I still won the set. Um, there are definitely spots I could have exploited him more. I was just kind of nervous. I didn't want to lose to Doc. <laughs> What's up, Aquiz? But yeah, I think it's only a slight win. Um, I don't know. It's just like Mario. It's just like the Mario like effect. Because I think Mario does pretty good versus Sheik. So, kind of like similar archetypes. Um, Duck Hunt. I'm not sure if I would put Duck Hunt in just normal winning or slight win. Because I think Duck Hunt's neutral is kind of mid versus Sheik. She can kind of just move around all this stuff really well. Ferris swats away can for free, pretty much. Um, and his offstage game is really bad versus Sheik. He can kind of halt her edge guards at time with can, but it's, she can still like set up the ledge trap and like still like throw out a local middle grenade to try and like two frame him or just like ledge trap him. And his ledge options aren't that great either. So him being in the corner at all is really bad. And he also takes a long time to kill. Granted, Sheik is light, but she still shouldn't be dying below like 150 most of the time. If you're playing around the, the wind cons well. Um, Sheik Shore Hop goes over a clay pigeon pretty consistently. You can just jump over it and fair bouncing fish, nair into something. So there's definitely plenty of opportunities to punish him. Duck on up air is like pretty good, but like I said, Sheik has pretty good disadvantage options to get away from that. So the main things that I like I think are annoying in this matchup is the frame one options with can and clay pigeon both spawning frame one. So you kind of have to be a lot more honest in your combo routes. Um, a lot of like, I do a lot of like F tilt Nair into shield to bait out the can and blow him up. And then like me, I'm just shielding. I do stuff like that a lot versus him. I'll put him in slight win. Um, I definitely could see him here, but the frame one options keep you a little bit more honest than I would like. So I'll have him here. Falco, Falco's even. This character annoys the fuck out of me though, I can't lie. <laughs> um, he has really good anti airs for Sheik. Um, up tilt, obviously. Um, really good anti airs and really good air to airs versus Sheik. Um, forward air is really good at controlling that like horizontal space that Sheik likes to be in to like float around and threaten with forward air. Um, Nair is like pretty decent. It's okay. I feel like Fair is the main like money maker in that matchup when it comes to air to airs. Um, and Falco is surprisingly hard to combo. Um, I don't know what it is. I know he has a frame two air dodge, but I swear like he just gets out of stuff sometimes that he really shouldn't. But his neutral is kind of mid versus Sheik. Laser is like a little bit annoying, but you can always crouch under it and just force him to come to you. Um, it does disrupt your needle charge though. I think that's the biggest thing. Because when you're charging needles, you can't, uh... When you're charging needles, you really have to be cognizant of when Falco is shooting laser. Because if he hits you with one laser, you gotta re redo that whole stack. And that shit's mad annoying. But I also think that he still just has spacey disadvantage. Like offstage, it's pretty bad. Um, needles fuck up his recovery really bad. You can just trump bear to fucking stuff out his side B. I don't know. Footstool out of shield is also really important in this matchup, in my opinion. It's really important for fair because he low profile, so you can't punish it otherwise. Down air pressure is definitely a lot easier to deal with with footstools. Nair as well. Footstool is definitely super, super important in this matchup. I think without footstool, it's probably like slight losing, to be honest. Falco's mad annoying. But with footstool, it's definitely even. Um, Fox, I'd probably put in slight loss. Fox is really good, uh, really good vertical pressure versus Sheik. Um, fastest fall speed in the game. Really good sex kick that leads into a lot. Um, really good combos. And we can't really combo him too hard. Like, we're gonna be getting, we can get some stuff, but it's not gonna be the same amount of stuff that Fox is gonna be getting. I feel like the main thing that you have to do in this matchup is to exploit his space he's disadvantage super hard blow him up off stage because if you don't you're gonna lose it's as simple as that his pressure is just way too good vertical pressure mainly because she doesn't really have a way to anti-air him consistently up smash is too committal up tilt will trade or lose and then draw up air can stuff him out but that's kind of like the only thing you have 
It is really good though. If you know a fox is gonna land on you and you short hop up there, drag him down, kill him for it with a drag down upper up smash. Low percent start a grab with like F tilt or grab. It'd be pretty good, but I still don't think it's enough. Ganondorf, hard winning. I don't need to explain this. <laughs> I really don't need to explain this. Um, Greninja, I probably put Greninja in like a slight win. Um, I don't. I used to think this matchup was even, but the more I play it, I played against Anarchy um, a lot, and we both kind of agree that Greninja, like, I don't know, like his frame data just isn't good enough. Like, he's always like landing on you with something and trying to whiff punish you, but he's kind of just waiting for Sheik to fuck up, or Sheik is actually like creating openings and like has the ability to like do stuff. Like, Sheik doesn't really get edge guarded by Greninja. The only time like you're gonna get edge guarded is if you fumble really hard and get hydro pumped. That should never really happen. Um, something that's nice for Greninja is that he doesn't get raindropped. Um, that's just like a nice quality of life thing. But otherwise, like Greninja gets stuffed out of the air a lot, gets parried, um, and he just has way less ambiguous starters than Sheik. Um, I feel like the only way you really lose this matchup is if like you're just like swinging in spots that you really shouldn't, or if you just get down to rage down to up smashed at like 70. Otherwise, like his neutral is just like way more linear than Sheik. The way he finds kills is way more linear than Sheik. And yeah. Just get stuffed out for him otherwise. Pretty self explanatory. Kind of. Kind of. Um, Hero. I put Hero in Slight Win. I used to hate this matchup a lot. Like, a lot. Um, I still kind of do, just because like Hero's kind of RNG, sometimes it just kills you for no reason, um, but he, he sometimes it just kills you for no reason, and also Bounce, I think, a couple of spells in particular are really important in this matchup, like really prevalent. Um, I think Bounce is one of them, because it takes away all your Needle Extensions and Needle Kill Confirms, Needle Edge Guards, all that stuff. Granted, it only lasts for 10 seconds. But that 10 seconds feels like an eternity. Um, I think Accelerado is also pretty important because it makes it so that he outpaces Sheik for a limited amount of time. And it also kills Sheik's combo game versus him for a short amount of time. And then Zoom is another one. I think that Zoom kind of fucks up. Uh, like, you'll be edge guarding him and put him in a spot where, like, you know, you just have to rinse repeat him and eventually he'll die. But. He just get, keeps getting more chances to pull zoom. And when you're going close to the blast zone, you have a higher chance for zoom. So he's going to get it more often than he's not. So edge guarding hero is kind of fake, low key. Like I kind of want to put it here, like on the low. But like in neutral, like hero kind of like gets run down pretty hard. His outer shield is really bad. He has the up B, which is nice, but he kind of gets run over. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Hero doesn't deal with the brush down too well. So you just gotta keep up the pressure, make sure he doesn't get his buffs. And if he does, just don't play scared. And hope the RNG is in your favor, pretty much. I really don't like Hero, but I can't deny that Sheik does well in the matchup. Ice Climbers. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know where to put you. I'm probably going to put you in a slight loss. Because I think that there is a lot of counterplay in this matchup that a lot of people don't really implement, I want to say, or kind of like exploit. Um, Once they're separated, Sheik does really well, and Sheik has a couple of ways to separate them, but it's not as cookie cutter as a lot of characters. Because she kind of, ha she has to combo both of them at the same time and kind of like adjust her routes accordingly, especially when they're at different percents, it can get really weird. Um, grenade camping is pretty efficient in this matchup though, like at ledge, um, Icy's can't really do much about it, unless they hard call you out, which they can't really do even. Um, and Sheik is also pretty good at edge guarding Icy's, um, especially when Nana grabs the ledge, like you know how Nana grabs the ledge first and then Popo like comes up afterwards with the belay? Um, what was I gonna say? 
You can use needles to stuff out Popo, and Nana will still be grabbing ledge. And then if you just hit Nana, Popo won't be able to recover. So, there's definitely ways to exploit Icy's weaknesses in this matchup. I've seen Sheik's win this matchup. I know Captain L has beaten Big D a few times. Like, I'm pretty sure there was a point where Big D was struggling with beating Captain L for a little bit. And I know that AIM, best Sheik in Japan, best Sheik in the world probably, um, has beaten Futari, the best Icy's in Japan. 3-0 at a major. It was a Kageribi, I believe. Kageribi 8, I want to say. Maybe 9. So there's definitely counterplay in this matchup. It's definitely not unwinnable. But it's definitely an uphill battle. I cannot lie. I do not want to face an Icy's in bracket. But if I were to face an Icy's and I had prep time, I definitely think I could win. I just have to know the ins and outs. Um, Ike. I think Ike is pretty hard winning for Sheik. Um, Ike in this meta is so bad. <laughs> Ike in this meta is atrocious. Um, game plan is just way too linear. She gets a lot of parry, so Ike approaching is just a risk like every time. His offstage is like pretty mid versus Sheik. Needles just stuff out his uh, quick draw pretty hard. If you preemptively bouncing fish, if you read a jump side B, you can just kill him. Uh, and then, like I was talking about with Krom, um, you can't really hang on ledge and back air him the same way you can with Krom. It's a lot harder since Ike throws his sword up. So you have to time your iframes, like when you grab ledge, to iframe through the sword and then hit him as he's rising, which is pretty hard. But you can still needle him from on stage, short hop needle, into like down tilt back air, straight up back air, something like that. There's definitely a lot of ways to edge guard him. Yeah, Ike just kind of gets bodied, I can't lie. Incineroar. I want to... I'm not sure where I'd put him. Because I do still think that... Even though I beat SkyJ, I do think that Incineroar is the best heavy versus Sheik. But that isn't really saying much. <laughs> I would probably put him here. Just because, like... He's such an execution- he's more of an executionist than the others because he has a frame 3 escape option with revenge that literally buffs him. Um, but I think that he's extremely easy to combo. Um, and his offstage is pretty exploitable if you know what you're doing. Um, Bagger stuffs out his up B really consistently. So even when the instants try to up B high to ledge, you can stuff it out pretty easily. And if you- if they side B, you can bouncing fish them on reaction every time they're in too much lag um but incineroar does have a really good time trading versus cheek um and i don't know he's just really good at turtling but at the end of the day he does get just outpaced it's the slowest character in the game versus the fourth fastest character in the game don't never really have to commit the wrenches that he's gonna get aren't gonna be too strong either just because Sheik individual hits don't do an insane amount so unless like you up smash him out of a combo, like you try and up smash him in a combo that's not true, he's probably not going to be getting a revenge that's too massive. Or if you vanish like right in his face and he revenges you, like when you like if you vanish like at the ledge and try and like you try and poke at him and he calls you out, then that's like scary. Remind you what turtling means? Just like keeping standing your ground pretty much, playing in shield, just making sure, just trying to have them come to you pretty much. His ledge driving is also pretty good versus Sheik, just in general. Because rising aerials are kind of mid versus him, since a lot of the time you'll be trading. So you really have to pick your spots well. Time your get ups. Um, Inkling. Uh, I would put Inkling in one of these two tiers. I definitely do not think Inkling beats Sheik. My track record versus Inkling is very good. I've played Colorado, Cosmos, and Blue Jays Inkling. And I only dropped the game to Cosmos' Inkling because I got two framed at 40 by down here <laughs> when I was winning. So it's like, it definitely feels like a winning matchup. 
at least like through experience. MNF has a lot of inkling experience. Also, hi. <laughs> What's up? Are you from M MNF's region? I like his chic a lot. His chic is really cool. His chic reminds me of my chic a lot, which I like. I would probably put inkling here. Maybe here. I'll put him there for now. Do you know what MFF, MNF thinks of this matchup? Like, I want to put it here. I think he says evenish. All right, I'll put it here. I'll put it here. Um, Isabel. I'll probably put Isabel in slight win. She has better frame data than a lot of these characters, which is a big thing. And she can at least play the range game better than a lot of these characters too. With the uh, chip damage. Like Isabel with a lead is mad annoying. These characters like these characters with a lead, I'm not really scared of, not gonna lie. Like I feel like I have like solid enough win cons so that I can make a comeback versus all these characters. Isabel, it's not like I can't make a comeback versus Isabel, but I'm gonna be working a lot harder. It's gonna be like chipping me down with fucking with slingshots. I don't think uh, Lloyd is that big of a deal though, cause she cause is fast enough to dash shield over it, and just like get rid of it that way. Like she might not have moves that like destroy it outright, like a lot of characters, but that dash shield has treated me well. Isabel's off stage is like worse than villagers too. Um, she has a tether, but the upbeat has a lot less fuel, so. Inkling Booyah is very generous on Sheik. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like a 19% window, if I remember correctly. But don't get grabbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd probably put it here, to be honest. It's probably pretty accurate. I'm trying to be realistic with my stuff. Like, it's a lot of, uh, in theory, 100 to 113. That's still, like, pretty nice. Yeah, I'm trying to be realistic with a lot of these takes. Like, in theory, like, she could probably, like, destroy some of these characters, but, like, I feel like in practice, some of them are, like, harder. Uh, Joker. I'll probably put Joker in one of these two tiers. Probably here. Joker does have some stuff, though, but a lot of the time he does get outpaced. Um, our stun is pretty easy to deal with for the most part. She drains it pretty well through offstage because his recovery with Arsene is very bad versus Sheik. Um, her back air is so active that she just stuffs it out repeatedly and you just rinse repeat. So even if he doesn't die from it, because sometimes you'll like rinse repeat and then like he drains Arsene but then he gets back with a tether. Like that's still a W because you got mad percent and you got rid of Arsene and base Joker gets bodied by Sheik. Joker has to play a really passive game in this matchup. This is a matchup that I have a lot of experience in. Joker definitely has to play a really passive game versus Sheik, because if he tries to scrap with her, he is going to lose. But he can definitely make plays with Arsene to kill her pretty early. But if you're cognizant of what he's trying to go for, how to, what he's fishing for, it's definitely a pretty good matchup. Jigglypuff. This is a matchup that I don't have too much experience in, I can't lie, versus high level reps. Um I mean, granted, there aren't really that many <laughs> high-level Jigglypuff reps, but I've never played Base Mage, and then, like, never played, like, what, Cannon Red or something? I don't know what other Jigglypuffs there are, but it feels okay. It doesn't feel like I body Jigglypuff, though. I would probably put it, like, here-ish. Because, like, you're not really getting edgeguarded by Jigglypuff too often, but... I don't know. She has pretty good hitboxes versus Sheik. And the frame one rest is like kind of troll, but it is a thing that you have to be cognizant about. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I can't even like explain this one too much because I don't have too much experience. This is just kind of like a feel pick. I could totally be wrong with this one. Um, Kazuya, I think Kazuya is like here. 
I think Sheik probably does better versus Kazuya. Oh wait, no, I've seen the MF MNF video. I've seen that one. <laughs> that shit is mad funny. I felt so bad for him. Who's MNF? He's a Sheik from... Is it Quebec? He's from Quebec, right? Yeah, from Quebec. Yeah, I think he's on the come up. I think he's probably... He's low-key, like... Low-key, he's like probably like the next Sheik on the come up. In my opinion. He just like is trapped in Quebec. <laughs> and he's in like a I'm pretty sure he told me he's in like a, a far part of Quebec too. Like he's not like close to like too many things. So But I think he's really good. Yeah. I do think if he traveled more, he'd probably like get more experience and like start doing well. Jeez, yeah, he is deep. <laughs> But yeah, I'm a fan of him. You can let him know. I've probably told him already. What was I doing? Oh yeah, Kazuya. Um, so yeah, Kazuya, like, I think Sheik has a very, very good neutral um, versus Kazuya. Like, Sheik low profiles electric by existing. Not really, but like, Sheik crouch goes under electric, which is huge. And a lot of under other really strong starters for Kazuya. So it forces him to play a lot more honestly in neutral. She also has insane mobility and really good combos versus Kazuya. And Kazuya's combo breakers aren't the greatest. He only really has um, down B to try and armor through it. And what frame does Kazuya's down B armor even start? I feel like it's not that fast. Let me check. Make sure I'm not talking out of my ass. Yo, he has so many moves. Armor on frame 5. So yeah, it's like not like insane it's like it's worse than a heavy air dodge oh whoops it's worse than a heavy air dodge no i don't think fox is our worst matchup i think that's cap a lot of sheiks say that fox is really bad but i don't really see it i have to play light though maybe light will show me the light <laughs> uh, i think i just think you need to be really efficient off stage versus fox But yeah, um, he doesn't really have a great time breaking Sheik's combos, and then she kind of out she out not even kind of she definitely does outpace him in neutral really hard. Um, since he can't really just spam his like free starters, he has to play like a more honest neutral and try and like I don't want to say chip you out because Kazuya's damage output is still like fucking crazy, but like even for individual hits, but he's not just gonna be zero to nothing Sheik unless like she kind of trolls. Um. I don't think Sheik really has an issue killing Kazuya too much either, because like obviously he gets comboed really hard, and the offstage game is like somewhat weak. You can trade with the uh, Kazuya up B with down air if you catch it during the startup, but even without that, the edge guarding is still really solid. Is there a VOD of that? I didn't see it. <laughs> 